Let's look at one more weak acid problem. So they tell you the Ka for niacin, which is a weak acid. They don't even give you the formula. They just tell you, treat it like a generic weak acid, HA. And they give you the Ka, and they're, uh, they want to know what the pH is. So they give you an initial concentration. So this is one where they give you initial and Ka. And then they want you to solve for the equilibrium. And then once you know the equilibrium, which is going to be the hydronium concentration, then you can find the pH after that. So let's set up our ice table. Um, initially, we have what here? Initially, we have 0.01. Um, have the Ka already set up for you. And let's see, set up the rest of this. We don't have any of those initially. Minus x plus x plus x. These ice tables all look the same, pretty much. OK, so those are our x's. We're looking for. The, the pH, so we're looking for the equilibrium, so we already know the Ka. So we're going to take this bottom row, plug it into our Ka expression. We know the Ka is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5, and that's equal to x squared over 0 0.010 minus x. And let's see, if we look at the Ka, it's times 10 to the negative 5, so we know that's going to be pretty small. Anything you know beyond that is going to be um, even smaller. So times 10 to the negative 5, you're, you're right on the cusp there where you can probably approximate it, but you always want to check. So we'll approximate and then we will check. So we can solve for x here. So we have 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5 times 0 0.010 equals x squared. Take the square root of both sides and you can solve for x. And x is equal to 3.5 seven times ten to the negative four. Um, that's not our final answer. That is the hydronium concentration. So that's what X is right here. Hydronium is just X. And we're looking for the pH. pH is negative log of all that. And I carried out one extra sig fig here. We really only have two sig figs. Um, we have two sig figs there. So I'm carrying out one extra guard digit so I don't overround. And my pH ends up being 3.41. So remember, two sig figs there means the numbers of uh, the numbers after the decimal place. So that's our pH. And if you go ahead and, and do the check, the check looks like to, to make sure that this approximation is okay. Um, you do your x over initial times 100. So our x was 3.87 times 10 to the negative 4. Our initial was this guy, right? 0.010 times 100, and that gives you 3.87%, which is less than 5, so approximation is OK. Is OK. <laughs> There's a K. All right, so that was our last weak acid problem. Weak, th so far, we've just looked at monoprotic weak acids, so one proton coming off at a time, but we also have polyprotic acids, where you have more than one acidic hydrogen coming off. Um, and so if you have something like H2SO3, uh, this hydrogen, see how you have the two there. We're going to pull off one hydrogen at a time. So you have two ionization reactions that you'll have here. So first one comes off, right? Just take off one of these hydrogens, goes over here. Great, you get hydronium and HSO3 minus. And then this guy undergoes another ionization where this hydrogen comes off now and goes over to the water. So you get some more hydronium. Most of the hydronium that you're going to make comes from the first step. So most of the hydronium comes from the first step, which you can tell if you look at the Ka's. The Ka1 is always going to be a lot bigger than Ka2. So this Ka1 is a lot bigger Ka2. One just means the first ionization. The, K2, the Ka2 means the second ionization, pulling off that second proton. So you can have uh, monoprotic acids, that's what we just looked at, or diprotic or triprotic. So when you have these polyprotic, just meaning you have more than one, so those are your diprotic or, or triprotic, you're going to have more than one Ka, so that's how you'll know um, when you have these. And you'll see that you have more hydrogens out in front, so this is diprotic, this one is triprotic, here's another triprotic, so there's not too many triprotic acids that we'll look at. And again, you don't have to memorize these Ka's, I would give you these. The trick with these problems is that you have to make two ice tables. You're going to do a double ice table. So let's try one of these problems here. Um, calculate the pH of a 0.1 molar carbonic acid. So I have the first ionization written here. They give you the Ka for the first one and for the second one. So the first one, all I did was take just our regular acid, and I took off one of the protons, so we're here. 
Um, and then the next ionization, this guy is going to undergo the ionization. So not the hydronium, but the other one. So this is an amphiprotic species. It can act as an acid or a base. In this reaction, this is the acid. This is its conjugate base. But this thing will also undergo another ionization, another acid ionization. So when he is sitting around in water, he's also going to dissociate into, into more ions. So you're going to make a little bit more hydronium. Most of the hydronium comes from the first step, but you will make some here. So in your, your second ice table, you will have some hydronium to start off with, and you'll have some of this. So whatever your equilibrium concentrations were in the first ice table, they're going to be your initial in the second ice table. So we're going to make some ice tables. We need to write out our, our um, Ka expressions here. So Ka1 is the hydronium times HCO3 minus over... H2CO3. Okay, and we know what that number is. It's right there. It's four. It's in the table. I think the problem that I gave you is in the table, but um, I just put it in here for this problem. We're going to set up an ice table. We're starting off with a 0.1 molar concentration. We don't have any of those initially. So the first step looks just like all the other ice tables we have made in this chapter. And then we take this and we plug it into our Ka expression and we solve for x. So we have 4.3 times 10 to the negative 7 is x squared over 0.1 uh, minus x. And we look at our Ka times 10 to the negative 7. That's pretty small. So we can probably get rid of this x, which will make our lives a lot easier. So we have 4.3. And we can always check it. We will. 4.3 times 10 to the negative 7 uh, times 0.1. square root of both sides and solve for x and we get x to solve for x and we get like 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4 and that's this guy right here this is 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4 the hydronium is also 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4. And if they asked for this concentration, which I don't think they did, you just do 0.1 minus 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4, and then you can find that final concentration. So these are our equilibrium concentrations from our first ice table, but uh, and, and we have a pretty good idea that that's how much hydronium we're going to make. And so we can find the, the pH based off of that guy, but we'll, we'll do the second ionization. So now what happens is this one undergoes ionization. And see how we have these two concentrations? They're going to be our initial concentrations down here. So this is right here now, right? And we're going to, now it's our reactant. This product now becomes a reactant. It's going to just dis dissociate into ions again. And so my initial concentration of that one is whatever the equilibrium concentration was before. So this guy is going to go here, and it's also going to go there. So, I, which is actually going to make our lives pretty easy. I'll show you why. A whole bunch of things are going to start to cancel. And so, instead of having, having zero, I have some hydronium from my initial step. And I don't have any of that. So now I can make my regular ice table, subtract, add, add, 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4 minus x. And over here I have 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4 plus x. And that's also x. There we go. And I can plug this into Ka2, which is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11. And that's going to be x times 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4 plus x over... 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4 minus x. And so you might be looking at that thinking that's a nightmare, but look at this exponent. It is so small times 10 to the negative 11, which means x is going to be really small. So 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4 plus something really small is just 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4. And also if I subtract it, it's also negligible. So I can get rid of the plus and the minus x. Don't get rid of this x. You need this x. This is what you're solving for. This is the rest of the hydronium, or this is the rest of the um, 
carbonate ion that you're making, and that's what they're asking for in part B. So that's what that X is going to be. It's not the hydronium. You're going to add that much hydronium to whatever you started with. Um, so we'll, what we're going to do here is just solve for X. So this cancels and this cancels, and X just ends up being Ka2, and that's always going to happen. 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11. That's equal to the carbonate ion concentration. Um, now to figure out what the pH is, you're going to add you're going to add that x, this new x that you found there. So this is 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4 plus 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11. And when you work that out, this is so small that it ends up not really uh, even registering there. So you just end up with 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4 after you work all that out and round to the right number of sig figs. That's your final hydronium concentration, which is the same as what you got from the first step. So if you want to find the pH now, you just do negative log of that. And when you work that pH out, you get 3.68, which is acidic, which kind of makes sense.